Welcome to our homestead. It's 91 degrees here in the greenhouse and I'm going to start a fire. But before I start that fire, I'm going to roll down the sides and close the doors. Let's talk about why I'm doing something crazy like this. So let me talk about what I have on the fire here. I've got some punky wood here on the top. Punky wood is basically just moist, half rotten wood. And then over here, I've got some pieces of cedar. And the rest of it is just some oak and some sweet gum. And then obviously some kindling to start the fire. I don't know if you can see it on camera very well, but the greenhouse will fill up with smoke quite quickly. I'm gonna close this greenhouse up so the smoke stays in here. I will explain what we are doing and the benefits of it. Fire and smoke have been used for centuries in traditional agriculture, and today we've just lost our way. Native Americans used to burn fields and use that charred remain as an additive to the soil, and smoke is also used even around the world today to fumigate greenhouses. We even develop fumigation bombs, smoke bombs, to put into greenhouses and into houses to control insects. Now, I've got a pest problem right now in this greenhouse and I can't seem to get it under control. If you've been following us for a while, you know that we use all organic methods of pest control and growing here on our homestead. If you're interested in checking out some of those videos, click at the top of the screen. So we use things like neem oil and soap as a combination to ward off pests and suffocate them. We, use, we do use some uh, naturally derived um, insecticidal soaps like that have uh, chrysanthem chrysanthemum flower in it, hard to say. But one thing I've been experimenting with recently and I wanted to show you was a regular smoke just a smoke from a regular fire and fumigating the greenhouse. Now, let me explain what I put on the top of that fire. We put some cedar wood and some punky wood. Punky wood will just give you more smoke. It's just a half rotten piece of wood that's a little bit moist. And then cedar has natural, um, I think they're called tannins, within natural properties within the wood itself that will help to ward off pests. Now, I obviously cannot do that out here with my regular garden, but the greenhouse is a perfect environment to do this. That smoke has some benefits to the plants. It's obviously producing carbon dioxide when it's burning. So it's gonna help aid in that photosynthesis process. Also contained within the smoke and the fine particles of ash that are in the air are minerals. Those minerals will are sticky, actually. The smoke is sticky and it will stick to the plants. Now there's a, there's a negative to this, but let me talk about the benefit first. When that smoke sticks to it with those minerals in it, those plants will take in those minerals through the stems and the leaves and down to the roots. And then of course, through the roots, it will be translocated to the soil where other plants can use it and the microbes can use it as well. Okay, but the negative to having the smoke in there is that it can suffocate the plants. That smoke is, like I said, sticky and it can uh, clog up the stomata on the plants, causing them to not be able to breathe properly. So when you're doing this, you wanna be careful not to really put a heavy, heavy amount of smoke in there. I'm gonna let this go for about a half an hour, and that hopefully will give a good amount of time for those insects to suffocate. And for the insects, just like the plants themselves, they breathe through holes in their outer, usually exoskeleton, but a lot of them have really complicated respiratory systems and the smoke will suffocate them. Now, if you think your plants may have gotten too much smoke, and it's honestly really hard to tell, but the way you can help alleviate any uh, respiratory problems with the plants, essentially, is to hose them off. And when you are hosing them off, you want a strong but fine stream and you want to wash under the leaves as well as on top of the leaves. So we all know that there are benefits from forest fires, and there's been a lot of studies done on this, that the soil is enriched after a fire, and the forest that was there before actually comes back healthier. And there's still plenty of farmers who do burns of their fields in modern times. If you wanted to add other things onto the top of that fire to help keep or help ward off those bugs, beside the cedar, eucalyptus is a really great wood to add. You can also put on top fresh rosemary, 
are also fresh sage. Now, I would recommend drying those up a little bit, maybe for a few days, so they do get a little bit of moisture out of them. But if your fire's hot enough, you can throw them right on the top and it's gonna benefit anyway. Let's go see how we are doing in here. And if my fire went out, that punky wood is <laughs> trouble sometimes to keep it lit. Oh no, whoo! Ah, we've got a lot of smoke in there, so we're gonna call it good and let it sit like that. If you all do this on your homestead, or if you have any questions, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. If you're interested in getting one of these greenhouses, click on the link in the video description below. That's a great family owned company here in the US in Tennessee. And click on this series of videos right here, which is our entire series about how we put this greenhouse together by ourselves. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.